Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our head and neck anatomy series. In this video, we'll be talking about the triangles of the neck, as well as the muscles of the neck. So the neck muscles are innervated by a whole bunch of different nerves, those being cranial nerve V3, cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 11, and the cervical spinal nerves 1 through 3. The neck is divided into two main triangles, those being the anterior triangle and the posterior triangle, and they're separated by this muscle, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The reason for these triangular divisions is for localizing anatomical structures within each and localizing pathological conditions. So we're going to start by unpacking the anterior triangle, which is itself subdivided into four smaller triangles. The first one is the submandibular triangle. This one's framed by both the anterior and the posterior belly of the digastric, as well as the inferior border of the mandible. This triangle contains the submandibular gland and the submandibular lymph nodes, sharing the same name underneath the mandible, as well as the facial artery and vein, cranial nerve 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve, and the mylohyoid nerve. Right next door, we have the submental triangle. This one's framed by the midline, the anterior belly of the digastric, and the hyoid bone. This one contains lymph nodes also sharing the same name, the submental lymph nodes, and the beginning of the anterior jugular veins. The muscular triangle is down below. This one's framed also by the midline, the superior belly of the omohyoid, and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This one contains the infrahyoid muscles, the muscles below the hyoid bone. We'll talk more about those later, as well as the thyroid and parathyroid glands. And lastly, we have the carotid triangle. This one's also framed by the superior belly of the omohyoid and the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and up here, the posterior belly of the digastric. This one contains the carotid sheath. And the carotid sheath contains four key things that we talked about in the fascial space video. And those are the common carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, the vagus nerve or cranial nerve 10, and the deep cervical lymph nodes. So all four of those things are definitely important to know for the board exam. The carotid triangle also houses cranial nerve 12 and the ansa cervicalis of the cervical spinal nerves. The carotid artery pulse is also palpable in this triangle. And then we have the posterior triangle, which is behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And this one itself is subdivided into two smaller triangles, the occipital triangle, which is above this inferior belly of the omohyoid right down here. And the subclavian triangle is below that inferior belly of the omohyoid. The posterior triangle as a whole contains cranial nerve 11, branches of the cervical plexus, the phrenic nerve, subclavian artery and vein, the external jugular vein, and roots of the brachial plexus. The floor consists of several neck muscles, or I should say upper back muscles, and those are the splenius capitis, levator scapulae, and the anterior, middle, and posterior scalenes. To review, this is a helpful diagram that I came up with, just kind of simplifying all the triangles, bringing it into one big rectangular drawing. So the main boundaries here, again, are the sternocleidomastoid, which cuts through diagonally, and then we have the trapezius muscle, making the posterior border, the mandible, making the top border, the midline, making the medial border, and then the clavicle underneath. So those are making up our primary borders. And then we have the digastric muscle, which frames the submandibular triangle up there. We have the hyoid bone cutting across. And then we have the omohyoid, which also has two bellies, the superior one, and then it swings down to make the inferior belly. And all of that together is going to comprise all of the boundaries of all six of those triangles we just went over. All right, so now let's talk about the actual muscles of the neck. The suprahyoids 
are going to do exactly as the word says. They're going to appear above the hyoid bone. The muscles included in this are the geniohyoid, mylohyoid, anterior belly of the digastric, posterior belly of the digastric, and the stylohyoid muscle. Their general function is informed by their location. They're going to elevate the hyoid bone up, as well as the tongue. And or if the hyoid is being stabilized, they can depress the mandible. How do I remember these names? Well, I remember the, uh, the saying that Google Maps is super. So the G stands for geniohyoid. All of these letters refer to these four muscles. And super helps me remember superhyoid. So Google Maps is super. All right, so let's go through these muscles one at a time. The geniohyoid muscle is innervated by the cervical spinal nerve 1. It originates from the genial tubercles of the mandible, and I'm going to be uh, including the parts of the word in red that inform how the name comes about. Most of these, the name has to do with where they're originating and where they're inserting. So the genial tubercles are also known as the mental spines, but genial helps us remember geniohyoid. Hyoid bone is where it's inserting. This one's going to elevate the hyoid bone and the tongue during the swallowing process. The mylohyoid originates from the mylohyoid line of the mandible and it also inserts to the hyoid. It elevates the hyoid bone and the tongue. It also forms the muscular floor of the mouth. The anterior belly of the digastric originates from the digastric fossa of the mandible right up there and it inserts into the intermediate tendon. That's the part that attaches to the hyoid bone. And the action is to elevate the hyoid or assist the lateral pterygoid in depressing the mandible. Some people may refer to the digastric as a muscle of mastication. This one's also innervated by uh, V3. The mylohyoid was also innervated by cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve, the third branch of that nerve. The posterior belly of the digastric is innervated by cranial nerve 7, and it originates from the mastoid process of the temporal bone back here. It also is going to insert, though, into that intermediate tendon that's connecting the two bellies. That, that tendon, again, is attached to the, the hyoid bone. The action of this muscle is going, to be the, is going to be the same as the anterior belly, to elevate the hyoid or assist the lateral pterygoid in depressing the mandible. Interestingly, this muscle specifically is going to be sensitive to palpation in class 2 skeletal patients with a retronathic mandibles. The stylohyoid muscle is going to originate from the styloid process of the temporal bone, and it inserts again into the hyoid bone, specifically the greater horn of it. The action, again, is going to be to elevate the hyoid bone during swallowing. So again, a lot of those muscles sharing the same function. This one, in addition to the posterior belly of the digastric, is innervated by cranial nerve 7. And next we have the infrahyoid muscles, which, as we talked about before, are going to be below the hyoid bone. What's their general function? Well, again, think about their location. They're going to be depressing the hyoid bone. And how do I remember these names? Well, I remember the phrase, toss the strap, and toss is going to be referring to the first letter of each of these four muscles. And strap helps me remember infrahyoid because the infrahyoid muscles are also known as the strap muscles due to their shape. The thyrohyoid muscle is innervated by cervical spinal nerve one. It originates from the thyroid cartilage of the larynx and it inserts, of course, into the hyoid bone. The action is going to be to elevate the thyroid gland and depress the hyoid bone. The omohyoid originates from the scapula, also known as the shoulder blade, and the word omos means shoulder in Greek, so that's where that comes from. This one's innervated by the cervical spinal nerves one through three, which are the branches of the ansa cervicalis. The action is to depress the larynx and the hyoid bone, 
and those superior and inferior bellies that connect below the sternocleidomastoid muscle are connected via their own intermediate tendon as the digastric muscle was up here. And then we have the sternothyroid muscle. This one originates from the manubrium of the sternum at the center of the chest and inserts into the thyroid cartilage. And the action is to depress the thyroid cartilage, being below the thyroid gland. And lastly, we have the sternohyoid muscle. It originates also from the manubrium of the sternum, and it's going to insert all the way up at the hyoid bone. This one, again, is going to depress the hyoid bone. And lastly, we have two more muscles to talk about, these being our two big boundary muscles of the neck. So the sternocleidomastoid muscle originates from the manubrium of the sternum, again, down here, and the clavicle as well, and it inserts into the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And all three of those together inform the name sternum, clido, which is uh, also meaning for clavicle or a collarbone, and then mastoid is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So all three of those together make up this very unique name. The action is to rotate and flex the neck. And lastly, we have the trapezius muscle. This one originates from the spine as well as the occipital protuberance at the back of the skull. It inserts into the scapula, which is, again is the shoulder blade, and it rotates, elevates, and depresses the shoulder. It's the only muscle of the upper limb that's supplied by a cranial nerve, which is interesting. And so the, the sternocleidomastoid as well as the trapezius are the two big muscles to remember that are innervated by cranial nerve 11, which is the spinal accessory nerve. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you're interested in supporting this channel and what I do here, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you to all of my patrons here for all of your support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides if you want to take notes on things and practice questions for the board exam, so go check that out. The link will be in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.